mission certainly not without controversy becoming politically charged as China avoids blame for alleged missteps in handling the COVID-19 outbreak. And joining us tonight to talk more about the news out of Wuhan, China is Bethany Allen Ibrahimian. She is the reporter who covers China for Axios and has broken several key stories in the region recently. Bethany, thanks for talking to us tonight on News Nation. I'd like to begin uh, with the situation in Wuhan, and we heard just now that the WHO team is there. Do you believe that the Chinese government will give them the necessary access to complete their investigation? Well, what we've seen from the Chinese government over the past year is uh, an extreme control of information that started uh, from the earliest days of the outbreak, December 31st, uh, 2019, you know, we saw the arrest of several scientists who had tried to raise alarm bells about the, the strange new illness. And we've only seen since then um, an increasing crackdown on domestic information, on the information that's released internationally regarding a uh, number of cases, um, samples, uh, all kinds of things. It would seem out of character then for the Chinese government to, to give true open access to the WHO scientists. And indeed, the negotiations for this trip, for the, for the WHO scientists to do this probe, took several months. So it, it seems somewhat unlikely that they would be forthcoming. Can you tell me what they're looking for specifically and who they're hoping to talk to? Well, the scientists are hoping to speak to uh, anyone who had early knowledge of, uh, of the virus. That would be doctors, it would be scientists who, and medical researchers who did some of the earliest studies of the virus, and also some very early patients and their experiences. They're also hoping to go to some key facilities, um, the uh, wet market, the, the animal market, where there was an early cluster of cases. I'd like to talk to you now about the situation, of course, between China and Taiwan. As the WHO investigates the pandemic, we have a very serious situation developing between uh, Taiwan and China. Just for folks at home, the Democratic Progressive Party in Taiwan wants independence from China, and China has said that independence means war. In fact, we have seen a show of force from China with some airplanes over that region uh, just in the last couple of days, Bethany. Uh, what are you hearing about the current situation right now? Um, so certainly things are more tense than they have been in recent years. Over the past few months, there have been a growing number of incursions uh, of Chinese fighters and bombers into Taiwan's air defense zone. And we just, you know, heard a threat from China saying that if Taiwan were to declare independence, that would mean war. Uh, however, I do want to kind of um, couch this by saying that we have seen heightened tensions between Taiwan and China before, and that this is very far from, for example, in the 90s when there was really a crisis there and you saw you know China launching um, missiles uh, you know, to, to land in the, the waters off of Taiwan so we're, we're not there yet but part of what has sparked this uh, rise in tensions is, is in part uh, you know the US so we saw in the last um, few days of the Trump administration uh, an announcement that the US was going to remove self-imposed bureaucratic restrictions on the, the U.S. China, uh, US Taiwan relationship. And indeed, President Biden seems to ha be abiding by those, those newly lifted, uh, those re lifted restrictions. Uh, they invited the Taiwanese representative to the, uh, to the U.S. to attend Biden's inauguration, which is the first time since 1979 that the Taiwanese representative has attended. And Bethany, we know the U.S. does have an agreement to supply Taiwan with defensive weapons. The Biden administration has come out and said we solidly support Taiwan. So do you expect a tougher stance from the Biden administration in dealing with China right now on this issue? I think the Biden administration is going to do everything they can to balance these sort of competing priorities. On the one hand, they really value a close relationship with Taiwan and, as they have stated, are committed to defending Taiwan and upholding uh, Taiwan's current status, um, you know, that it's able to govern itself. On the other hand, no one wants a war here. Nobody wants Taiwan to be invaded. No, no one wants act, an actual military conflict, and the U.S. would be sucked into that if there were one. So the Biden administration has to, uh, you know, figure out how to, to thread that needle um, to assure China that they are not going to support an actual announcement of independence while maintaining that strong support for Taiwan, 
you know, what, what we've just seen uh, from the Biden administration is an infusion of, um, you know, of strong uh, bureau, uh, diplomatic talents. And there's a, a lot of people who are joining the Biden administration with years of experience in diplomacy. So I think they are well prepared to handle this crisis. A situation we are all following very closely. Bethany Alam Ibrahimian, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you for having me.